We have two type of pieces, a domino and a tromino, both of which can be rotated. Additionally, we are given an integer n, which represents the width of a board, while the height is always fixed at 2. Our goal is to find the total number of ways to completely fill the board using dominoes and trominoes, without leaving any empty spaces. When we are faced with a difficult problem like this, the best way to start is by looking at the simplest cases to see if we can identify a pattern. Let's start with the smallest case of a board of size 1. It's obvious that there is only one way to fill it, by using a vertical domino. For a board of size 2, we can't use any trominoes because they will leave an empty space. However, we can place two horizontal dominoes and two vertical ones. So, in total, there are two ways to fill the board. Now, let's consider the special case of a board of size 0. How many ways can we fill it? I would say there is one way, by not using any piece at all. Makes sense, right? Now, let's work with a grid of size 3. We can start by placing a vertical domino. That is interesting. Now we are left with a smaller grid of size 2, which is great because we already have the solution for that. We know that the subproblem of size 2 has two solutions. We can simply reuse them. This feels like a dynamic programming problem. The first part comes from the parent, which is a vertical domino, and the second part is solved by handling the grid of size 2 two horizontal dominoes and two vertical. Now for the other board we can place two horizontal dominoes in order to have a subgrid of size 1. And we already know that the subproblem has one solution. It follows the same logic. The first part comes from the parent and the second part is handled by the subproblem. We'll explore how to create solutions involving trominoes. But before we get into that, let's start by defining some key concepts. First, we'll introduce a structure called the Tromino group. This group follows a few basic rules. It begins with an opening Tromino, ends with a closing Tromino, and we can only use horizontal dominoes to fill the space between. Other Trominos and vertical dominoes are not allowed. Let me show you some Tromino groups of size 3, 4, 5, and 6. The Tromino group has some important characteristics. The first one is that the board must be at least size 3 in order to fit a Tromino group. Smaller boards of size 1 and 2 just don't have enough space. Next, every Tromino group has its mirror version. For instance, on a board of size 4, we can flip it. And this works for any Tromino group as well. We can always generate their mirror versions. The last property is that there is exactly one way to fill a Tromino group. For example, if we generate a Tromino group of size 4, we can be certain that is the only possible configuration. Any other arrangement would be impossible, except for its mirror version of course. Now let's finally complete our board of size 3 using Tromino groups. Since the board is of size 3, we can only generate a Tromino group of size 3. Notice that we have a remaining space of size 0. And there is only one solution for this subproblem. We just need to copy the Tromino group without needing any extra pieces. Next, we'll mirror the Tromino group and the process will work exactly the same as before. And there you have it, we have generated all five possible boards. We need to create a function for a board of size n. To help us, we'll also generate a function for a board of size 4. We'll start by considering solutions that begin with a vertical domino, just as we did with the board of size 3. This leaves us with a remaining space of 3, which can be handled by calling a subproblem. Because we are subtracting 1, we'll add to the end function a call with n-1. Next, we'll look at solutions that starts with two horizontal dominoes. This leaves a remaining space of 2 or n-2. Now, for the Tromino part, let's start by creating a Tromino group of size 4, or size n. This leaves a remaining space of 0 for our functions. Next, we create one Tromino group of size 3, or n-1, leaving a remaining space of 1. The same call is needed for the general function. 
According to the Tromino property groups, we can generate them for any size greater or equal than 3. For our word of size 4, we have reached the limit. We can't create a Tromino group of size 2. But for our end function, we can continue until we reach the size limit, which mathematically means calling until we hit n minus 3. Finally, it's time to handle the mirrored version of the Tromino groups. We just need to multiply by 2 the Tromino section. We have created the general function. Fortunately, it will be quite simple to code. Now, let's move to the coding part. We'll begin by creating an auxiliary function that takes the size of the board as input. With the base cases that we identified when solving the board of size 3, we can now apply them. Now, with the general function, we'll implement the same recursive calls. Notice that we'll need a for loop to make the iterative calls required to solve the Tromino part. As we discussed earlier, this is a dynamic programming problem. To optimize it, we'll cache the results of the subproblem by using an array called dp, which will help to improve the runtime. Since the problem prompt mentioned that the result can be quite large, we'll also apply a modulus operation to prevent overflow. And that's it. We have successfully solved the problem. It passes all the test cases, however, it's a bit slow, so there is room for optimization. In the final section, we'll work on improving the runtime by simplifying our general function. To simplify our general function, we can create a new function using n-1. This means each time that we encounter n, we replace it with n-1. Next, we can form an equation by subtracting f of n-1 from f of n. We notice that f of n-2 can be removed. To eliminate the iterative part, we can multiply f of n-3 by 2, which removes it from the group. After this, we observe that the iterative terms are now equal so we can delete them. And finally, we just need to perform basic operations to get our new general function. Great, our function is much simpler now. Let's apply it to the code. The changes are very simple to implement. We notice a performance improvement after applying this optimization.